What up, yo? It's got this old game. <clears throat> $17 used. From GameStop? Gay Stop? It's called, um, Demon Souls. It is the precursor to Dark Souls, which I got for myself as a birthday present last year. Was it the year before? Um, love of that game. Dark Souls might be my favorite single player game of all time. It's kind of a... The franchise is kind of like the real evolution of Zelda. You know, Zelda for the NES was really a much darker game than the more recent titles have been. They sort of clownified that game franchise. Um, they made it a little bit too family friendly, I think. Dark Souls, and this is uh, Demon Souls. Oh, just amazing games, man. You can do whatever you want. Um, there's all different things. Uh, there's different builds, as you would call them. Um, there's a strength build, where you're sort of trying to pursue large weapons and large shields and heavy armor. There's a magic build, where you cast spells. Um, what I'm doing right now, I started off with the Thief class, and I'm going uh, with the Dexterity build. Apparently, if you start off with the Royalty class, the game is easiest, but uh, I kind of felt like being Royalty is kind of like being a douche. So I went with the Thief. He's scrappy. Um, eventually, you can make your characters, you know, do whatever you want, no matter what you start off, but I guess the Royalty character starts off with a... Uh, magic soul arrows, which are, uh, you know, kind of a way to cheese your way through the early stage of the game. Anyhow, the character I'm creating is a dexterity build. Um, the idea is certain weapons, such as, uh, katanas, thin, sharp blades, are, uh, amplified by your dexterity power. So every time I get a, the, the currency in this game is called souls, every time you kill an enemy you get certain number of souls depending on the, how difficult that enemy is and you amass those you can see right there in the bottom right corner at this current time I had 439 and uh, you cash those souls in for various things in this game but one thing you can do is go to sort of your home base and level up the character's specific stats now you can't really level up everything all the same so you have to make a build so I'm going with the dexterity which means I had to get strength up to 18 and, uh, and then dexterity. I'm gonna leave magic alone. Uh, it's not for a while until I can actually cast spells. So, uh, you know, I prefer the uh, katana blade anyway. So, this gameplay was from before I actually found one. I'm using some sort of regular sword, but eventually I do get the Yuji katana. And man, it is beast. It's not as amazing as I thought it would be, but I don't give a shit, dude. It's the idea is that with the katanas, you slice the enemy many times. And uh, it begins to inflict bleeding damage, which is really cool. You can see the little stat bonuses under the longsword. The first column, that's uh, D, that is your strength. The second column that was uh, affected in an E is the dexterity. So when you see a weapon, it has that little letter next to it. And the, whatever, the higher the, the letter, the more your dexterity you know, affects it, or the more your strength affects it. Whatever stat affects it, and the, the farther away that letter is from A the more it affects it as far as how much damage it's going to output. So if you find like a weapon that has like a X under dexterity, if you have your dexterity leveled way up, that weapon is going to absolutely destroy people. So that's really what I'm going for. I hope to pick up some more higher dexterity weapons along the way, but either way I think it's pretty cool. You can equip a sword and a shield, a shield and a shield, only can't equip two shields, you can equip two swords, you have your bow and arrows, your crossbows, you can equip talisman to cast miracles, um, sorcerer's wand to cast spells, there's a spear, you can dual wield weapons, you can, uh, I mean, you can do anything, dude, it's so freaking awesome, these games, and I hear they're making a sequel to Dark Souls, I'm super excited about that, but for me, I never even played Demon Souls, so for me, this is pretty much the sequel to Dark Souls for me, it's the exact same mechanics and function, the same concept, it's, it seems to be the same writers, um, you can just tell by like the way the, the levels and the uh, the whole thing is laid out. You know, it's the same people, it's the same idea. This was their first game. I'm so happy now. I'm just not even signing online, just playing this game offline mode. You can actually play online and, and invade people's worlds and attack them for their goods or vice versa. People can attack you. 
but you can always, you know, if you're in the middle of something and somebody invades your world, you can always quit the game and they're gone, and then you can start over again. That chick right there, that's where you go to level up. After you beat the first stage, she appears in this area called the Nexus, and you can use her to level up. This guy you can use to drop stuff off, and he'll hold it for you because you have a certain amount, you know, oh, okay. a limit to how much you can carry when you're walking around. The guy off to his right is the, is the uh, blacksmith. I used him to level up my sword, my nail breaker, and my uh, Yuji Katana. He used shard stones. And what this game devolves into, which I really don't mind, it's called farming, where you go to an area over and over again and kill the same group of enemies in order to get the drops that they put down when they die, and then, uh, you know, use that to ready yourself for the next uh, stage. This game and Dark Souls are both ridiculously difficult and there's a heavy price to pay every time you die. Um, checkpoints are few and far between. There's not really standard checkpoints as you would call them. Sometimes in a, in a map you can pull a switch that makes you able to you go, you can bypass a bunch of caverns and go straight to an area. But um, for the most part, man, you die in this game, you are hating life. You know, there's moments in this game where I'll play, I'll start off from somewhere, let's call it like a, you know, the waypoint, the beginning of, the, of, a, of a map. I start off there, I'm like 20 minutes into it, I've used a shit ton of resources, I've used all my health, I've gone as skillfully as I can, I'm down to my last little uh, health revival thing, so I put my health all the way up, I walk through the doorway, and then there's a boss there, and he just smashes me with a fucking, you know, one fist to the dome piece, and I'm dead instantly. My entire health is gone. So it took me like 20, 30 minutes all the way through this area, boom, dead. That fast. So now it means I'm going to have to take another 20, 30 minutes, or maybe it's more like 10, 15, it feels longer. I'm going to have to take this whole exact, exact route, kill all the same enemies again, and then hopefully this time when I walk through that door, I will time a jump to the left so that I can duck the uh, attack. You know, sometimes you'll look for like an item you see on the ground and you're like, ooh, I want that. And you walk over there and like three flaming lizards drop down and completely trap you. And since you've never encountered them, you don't know how to kill them and you die. And now you have to get back there and learn. It's so cool that way though because like, you know, good players are always like, oh man, this game's too easy, man. Run through it, it's stupid. You know, the checkpoints, like I remember the Halo checkpoint system was ridiculous. Like you get a checkpoint every like couple minutes of, uh, of play. And in this game, it's really not like that, man. It is super tough, super demanding, and it makes you really get into the game. You get super involved with what's happening, you know what I'm saying? You're not disconnected, like you're really there. You put your headset on, you hear the footsteps of your character. You start sound whoring AI, you know what I mean? Like, come on, dude, what other game do you sound whore AI in? Um, the boss battles are the epitome of this game. The boss's AIs are always so unpredictable like every boss has a weakness and it takes you a few deaths and a few marches back into his cavern before you figure it out but man when you come back after getting beasted on by a boss and you finally establish a method that allows you to kill him and you, you smash that fool and it's usually by the skin of your teeth it's, it's this game, these games Demon Souls and Dark Souls it's almost never like a boss battle where you just completely dominate them. It's always like you kill them and you're like, wow, I just narrowly escaped that by the skin of my teeth. You're often going to be put down to almost no health and be frantically finding a place where you can, like, you know, drink from your flask and dark souls or eat the grass in this game, whatever the health, you know, replenisher is. And it's... It's so satisfying, man. You kill that boss. Now you got a benefit. You take the souls. You can make a special weapon out of them, you can upgrade your character, this, that, other thing, man. Man, I highly recommend you guys get these games. Demon Souls is like 18 bucks right now. Dark Souls is a lot more expensive, but, you know, these games are just fantastic. Can't believe how good these games are and how few people play them. Fucking amazing, dude. Go get it. Do yourself a favor. Watch me get crapped on and then crap on people.